Hello and welcome to this training session on data stage. Today we are going to look into one more important stage which is the processing stage and it is called the copy stage. Now copy stage in itself does not perform any data transformation. It is used for very simple operations like copying the source data to multiple output links, renaming the data columns in some cases or defining a new data type or changing the data type of the data columns. So we'll see how all this is done. Let us first open a blank job window. So go to the file menu, click on new, select a parallel job and a job window will open for us. So we'll just maximize this job window and now we can work in this job window. So it is a processing stage. So we need to go to the processing category of the job palette. We need to search for the copy stage. So here we have the copy stage. Let me just drag and drop it to my palette. Now copy stage, as we said, can be used to copy data to multiple output links. So let me define a source stage first. So my source stage is a sequential file stage. Let me connect the sequential file stage to the copy stage. Now this is my input link for the copy stage. Let me take out the output links from the copy stage. I can take out one link, I can take out two links, I can take out any number of links from this copy stage. Can I have a reject link? Let me right click on this stage, convert to reject. The source stage does not support reject links. So this stage does not have any reject link, it just has multiple output links. Now let's define a data source for sequential file. Let's, uh, let's define them in any file we can read. Let's read the customer file, customer.txt. Let's define the format delimiter as tab and quotes as none. And then let me just load the column definition here. So I load the column definition. I'll, I'll select the column definition for my customer data and I load it here to my copy stage. So now what will happen? Let's see. Let the table definition open up. So this is the simplest processing stage. It can also be used as a placeholder. We'll see what a placeholder means in the job. So before that, let's try to just do the simplest operation that a copy stage does, copying data to multiple output links. So we have the customer data. Let's select the customer table definition, say OK. Let's select all the columns, say OK again. And just say OK here. Now, let me click on my copy stage and let me remove the other links. Let me remove this link. Let me have just two links. This is first. Yes. And let me connect it to target stages, which are data set stages probably. So let me just connect it to a data set stage. And let me just connect the other link to a peak stage because we do not care about the data in that link. We are just seeing that this can support multiple links. So data set stage, before I go to the copy stage, let me configure this with the basic mandatory properties. Temp, test, copy, test copy dot ds because this should be the extension of my data set. Say OK. Now let us double click on this copy stage. So now we will be able to see the properties of this copy stage which need to be set. So the, in the properties tab, the only option that we say is force equal to false. So if you set this to true, what will happen? You can see here what will happen. True to specify that data stage should not try to optimize the job by removing the copy operation. So since this is simply a copy, copying data from one source link to multiple output links, there is no data transformation applied as such. So what data stage does in the back end is implicitly remove these copy operators. So we can by default, we can specify this as false. If 
you specify this as true then you are asking data stage not to optimize try to optimize the job by removing this copy operation but we do not care about it it can because it's just a simple copy operation that we leave it to data stage to decide to optimize the job or not by removing this copy operation now if you go to the input tab we will see all the columns which were defined here we do not need to partition the data in any way because we are not going to perform any key based operation we can go to the columns tab and see that all the columns are here. Now if you go to the output tab, we can see here that there are two links defined, DS link 4 and DS link 6. Because we had two output links coming out of this stage. Now the first output link, let's just simply drag and drop all the columns to this link. And the second output link, let's again just drag and drop all the columns to that output link. Say OK and compile our job and run this job. So before we can compile the job, again we need to save the job. So ds test cop. Save it in the test folder. Say save and this will save the job. Once the job is saved, the compilation will start. So once the compilation is done, we'll just run the job and see that the data as was present in the source has been copied to the target data set and the peak stage that we wanted it to copy to. So this is simply split up the data, not split it, uh, the uh, data, copied it to multiple output links. So just press play button and let's run this job. So once this job runs, ask me for the run options, now this job will run. And the links have turned blue, that means the job is running. So I have 20 rows in my source. I can see 20 rows have gone to the data set, 20 rows have gone to the peak stage as well. So all the rows, all the data in the source will be copied as it is to the data set. So we can verify this by just viewing the data of this link. Say OK and it will open up a data window and it will show us all the data in that link. So this is one of the operations the copy stage does, copy the source data as it is to multiple output links. What is the other operation that we can do with the copy operation? So this is the data, we have all the 20 records and all the data has been copied. Now let's try, close this and try some other operation. The other operation that we can do using a copy stage is let's go to the output tab and then let's simply rename one column. So let's rename country ID. Let's go here to the columns tab and rename it as country ID underscore FK. So you can use this to rename your columns. What else can be done? we can drop some columns. So let me go to the last name column and just delete this column from the output. So this way, I'm going to drop my column. So this will help me in dropping the column. What other action can I take? I can change the data type of some of the records. Now I know that age is an integer in the source. I can verify this, go to the input columns, see age was an integer column. Now I want to put it as a varchar column in my output. So what I need to do, columns, I'll just, so this is implicit data conversion will happen, data type conversion will happen. Varchar 5, let me define the varchar limit as 25. Okay. So, so we have done three kinds of operations now. We have changed one column name, we have dropped one column and we have changed the data type of one column. Say okay. So this is the fastest stage in data stage if you want to perform these kind of operations only. So whenever your need is to perform any of the operations of this kind, always go for copy stage and do not use more complicated stages because this will execute the fastest at the backend. So again, we'll compile the job and we'll run the job and we'll see what is the output that we're getting out of this. So you can close it and we can run it. So once we run the job, again we should be getting all the records and all the outputs. But in one of the outputs, we have made slight changes. So we will see how that looks up. 
So the job is now running. And once it finishes successfully, it will turn green. It has now turned green. So we can just go to this data set, right click and view the data for this data set. Say OK. And we can now view the data. So for this data set only we had made those three changes and they should be reflected in the data that we are now going to view for this data set. A column rename, a column drop and a column data type change. So we rename this column country id underscore fk. So this has come with that name, the values are still correct. We dropped one column the last name, so that is not here. We converted this age column to a varchar and the values are still there. So this is implicit data type conversion. Let's go and view the job log. And see whether any warning messages were generated because of the actions we took in this job. So there is a warning message generated for the age column. So this is the warning message that simply tells us that an implicit conversion was done and that's why this warning message has been generated so if you we can just see when binding output interface field age to field age implicit conversion from source so you whenever you do an implicit data type conversion the only thing that will happen is that there will be a warning message that will be generated in your job log so that is the only thing that will happen we can close the job log and now we have this job in place. So this is how you have to use copy stage. If you have to perform any of these three operations, always go for copy stage because that will be the fastest stage. Now, another thing we mentioned is that a copy stage can be used as a placeholder in the job. What does that mean is, if I just remove this, if I now want to put some transformations in my job, and I already had the copy stage in my job. I can just click on the links, remove them. They'll still retain all their metadata. I can delete the copy stage. I can go to my processing category and I can select my transformer or any other stage that I want to put here. So let's say it's a transformer. I can just drag and drop it here and I can reconnect it with all these links. So all these links will not need to be redefined. They'll already have all the metadata defined. So let's double click on this transformer and let's see how it does work. So in this case, it has all the metadata of the source link. It has all the metadata from the output link as well. So this is how it will work. This is how a transformer will work for us and helps us. So this is how a copy stage acts as a placeholder when you see that there might be a requirement change in the future or we might need to add more functionality to the data stage job keep copy stages as placeholders because they do not have any processing overhead in the back end so you can have as many copy stages as you want a copy stage is the best stage to use as a placeholder so in the future there is a need that i now i want to perform some transformation on my source data i can just take out the copy stage and replace it with whatever stage can perform that kind of transformation so this makes my job design scalable or it is more adjustable if there are any changes in the requirements. So this is how a copy stage is used. So it's also a very useful stage though its processing capability is limited, but it cannot do any data transformation as such, but it is still a very powerful stage and a placeholder stage that can be used for your jobs in data stage. So this was one of the jobs, one of the processing stages. In the later sessions, we'll be looking at more processing stages in more details. This is the end of this session for now. Thank you for watching.